You know, for someone like myself who isn't really great at basketball, I sure did play a lot of basketball video games in my teenage years, whether it was Double Dribble on the NES or NBA 2K for the Sega Dreamcast, I never really missed an opportunity to rent a new basketball game at my local video store or read up on them in any monthly gaming magazines. Combine this with my genuine affection for the sport and love for the Toronto Raptors, who have sadly been breaking my heart ever since Kawhi Leonard left the team in 2019, basketball is just my kind of game, and it translates over so well into the medium of video games. A very common thing that we started to see a lot of during the SNES and Sega Genesis years was this experimentation with creating exaggerated and extreme alternative basketball games. Games like NBA Jam and Looney Tunes B-Ball are perfect examples of basketball video games reinterpreting the rules and reimagining the sport. This wasn't and still isn't limited to just basketball video games. Almost every sport has had games where developers have basically thrown out all of the rules from what we know of certain sports and have crafted unique and more casual fun experiences. NFL Blitz for football, NHL Hits for hockey, Mario Strikers for soccer, or football if you're in the UK. These are great examples that take the professionalism out of the given sport, maintain the basic rules, and offer something different to the gamer that works so well in a video game that you could never get away with in real life. I played a lot of alternative sports games growing up. My after high school sports games of choice were usually Hot Shots Golf 3, SSX Tricky, and the king of them all, NBA Street. NBA Street was a big part of my teenage years, and it all came down to the fact that it was damn near perfect, and not to mention fun as hell. This is the type of game where you can have Michael Jordan on your team along with a Sasquatch and an alien from another planet. Like, how could you not love any of this? The physics were forgiving, the structure of the game was so inviting, and the replay value on it was just incredible and still is to this day. When EA Big disbanded and stopped moving forward with the NBA Street franchise, you could guess that I was pretty disappointed and am constantly trying to fill the void of that franchise in my gaming life. Enter NBA 2K Playgrounds 2, released in 2018. In an attempt to relive my NBA Street past, this game title seemed like a safe bet with its more casual style of gameplay and alternative sports game presentation. Is this too on Two basketball game a worthy competitor to the 2001 release of NBA Street, or is this a game that makes me miss my teenage gaming years even more? Subscribe to the Select Gaming to keep up to date with all our latest videos. This is NBA 2K Playgrounds 2 for the PlayStation 4. NBA 2K Playgrounds 2 is divided into many categories and it's incredibly well laid out with big chunky thumbnails to navigate through. NBA 2K Playgrounds 2 gives you the standard sports game menu. You have your exhibition game section, tutorials, playground championship mode where you get to play other players online, the NBA season, and the Get Packs section where you can purchase players and other items for your team from the points that you earn after playing every basketball game. Everything that you'd come to expect from a sports game, it's all there front and center in the home page. When you first start out your journey, you are gifted with opening up three random card packs where you'll be rewarded with players at random and some cool swag to dress them up in if you decide to do so in your card collection. Collecting and purchasing card packs of different varieties is a big part of the game and how you'll get new players and items, so it's something that you better get used to. The main menu may seem like a lot of options when you're navigating around, but truth be told, it's a lot of the same thing just being rebranded within its category with a few minor alterations to the structure of gameplay.
play. You'll most likely start out in the NBA season mode since it's the closest thing to having the most amount of structure and the longest lasting of game modes. NBA 2K Playgrounds 2 operates as a two-on-two -two basketball game. In exhibition games, you have a bit more flexibility with choosing your players as they don't have to be from a specific team. They can be from any era or any team. With the NBA season mode, you are restricted to committing to an NBA team of your choice until the end of the season. Through the continued gaining of points during a season, you'll be able to continue unlocking players and goodies that will further build the variety of players and teams in the league to choose from. NBA 2K's gameplay can be summed up as fairly simple, giving you the basic moves you need for playing a quick game of first team to 21 points back basketball. With some cool alley-oops, high-class dribbling, and filling up your basketball gauge with points, you'll get to temporarily go beast mode with faster players that increase your chances of the ball going into the net more easily. For the first two hours of delving into the game, I was content. The two-on-two -two gameplay makes it a quick pick-up-and-play basketball game, and the overall presentation of the graphics, gameplay options, and controls all felt fairly decent and has a quick learning curve to it that you'll figure out in no time. Problem is, when you really start to delve into the game and expect a bit more from it, you start to quickly realize that there is a bit of a glass ceiling to it. You don't start off with a ton of players or a lot of fun items in this game. It has a deep focus on gathering up points and then having you buy collector cards from the store for unlocking basketball players from NBA teams past and present. When unlocking NBA players in the season mode with your points, you'll be able to pick and choose at will afterwards. But with the collector packs, it's completely random. The collector packs really weren't my sort of thing since the randomization aspect of it didn't really feel worthy of my hard-earned points. Instead, I focused more on unlocking players from my NBA team so I could curate the perfect Raptors team that would have Vince Carter and Kawhi Leonard playing together. Thing is, it takes a really long time to rack up these points in the game, and there's a lot of waiting to craft your perfect team from the beginning. This in turn led me to reluctantly connect to the PlayStation Store, then begrudgingly paying for NBA 2K Playgrounds 2 points with my credit card, then proceeding to unlocking Vince Carter and Kawhi Leonard with those points that I had just purchased. You want to know what I was thinking right after I made that transaction? Man, oh man, that was so not worth it. NBA Playgrounds slowly made me realize that, sadly, it belongs to a family of games with in-game purchases and pay-to-play options to get the full experience quicker. This is one of my biggest gripes in the video game industry. Like, why not just make a good, fun game out of the gates here? It's just so odd that in this day of age, console games are comfortable with cheapening the experience that make them feel like cell phone games. It was disappointing disappointing to have to succumb to paying real money for points. But seriously, what was I going to do? Wait two weeks to unlock Vince Carter when God of War Ragnarok was just around the corner? And then I'd move on to that before I'd even have a taste of the real game? The biggest issue I have with NBA Playgrounds is that hidden away behind having to buy items and wait for a very long time to get players or to start having some actual fun, there is a good game here. I do believe that patience is a virtue. But like I said, why not make a good game at the start? Why not give the gamer what they want and blow their minds away with the amount of content and quality right away so that they are invested in giving their time to the game? The short answer, it's a business model. The devs know you're going to pay up, so they do it on purpose. This is something that I've seen become all too common, even in AAA titles like Gran Turismo 7. It's a disappointing aspect of this game, or any game for that matter, and it does hurt the experience greatly. Yes, I bought the Batman Beyond suit for Arkham Knight, but it didn't make the experience better. Arkham Knight was already a good game from the start. Buying the suit was just because it looked cool. There is a big difference with in-game purchases. There are purchases that are nice to have, and the other purchase is, if you want more of the real game, you have to pay up. I guess you could sort of say that I was expecting NBA 2K Playgrounds 2 to be my new NBA Street, but it's far from that. The bobblehead art direction and cartoony backgrounds 
try to come off as casual, but it still feels like a sports game that just takes itself way too seriously. Aside from a few in-game moments where the gravity is a bit forgiving and the rules like no contact aren't followed, NBA Playgrounds still feels a bit too real with the physics and weight of things. To be honest, I had more fun playing the exhibition games and the shootout tournament where it offered a really clever and fun shooting meter. Those moments to me felt like this game should have leaned more onto that side of things where it should have just been more fun than more professional. Now don't get me wrong, it's a polished sports game and you'll most likely have a decent time with it, especially if you're a basketball fan and appreciate the consistent replay value. The question you'll be asking yourself is, why play something like this when you can just have the more professional NBA experience? for a few dollars more with those added features. NBA 2K Playgrounds 2 feels like it isn't competing with casual or alternative sports games. The game feels like it wants to compete with professional NBA sports titles, and that's a fight that this franchise just isn't going to win. After spending about a week with the game, it honestly just made me want to play a more professional basketball game and made me miss the days of yore when buying in-game purchases didn't make the experience better. You just used to get a good game straight out of the gate. If you stick with NBA 2K Playgrounds 2, you will find that patience is a virtue when collecting points and you will eventually be able to unlock players and craft your perfect team. You'll also be able to devote a ton of time customizing your own basketball court too, as well as take advantage of the online play if that's your sort of thing. Overall, like I previously mentioned, there is a decent basketball video game here. If you go into it knowing that it's a little bit more pro than alternative, you'll do just fine. There is something to this franchise with the beginning of its foundation, as it's only the second in the title, but right now it's sorely and severely lacking in the fun right off of the top aspect. There is so much that can be done with this franchise and I don't want to come off as too critical as I do feel that games like this need to exist. There is a lack of casual sports games in our current time frame, and more devs could take advantage of it. If the future of sports games continues to involve in-game purchases or microtransactions, it's a future where I will take no part of it moving forward. If you're someone who enjoys basketball and basketball video games, this could be a nice little addition to your collection. With sports games, they're tricky in their offerings at times, but unlike titles such as professional basketball offerings, NBA Playgrounds isn't a game that has to be released yearly. This franchise is in a great position to have a game like this released every two to four years, where it can get better and better and have a longevity where gamers aren't getting bored of it. Here's hoping that if there's a next one and any future plans for the franchise, it's more fun than pro. Thank you for joining me on this episode of The Select Gaming. If you like what you've seen and heard, give us a like and subscribe. This is Dusty Maxwell, and we'll see you on the next one.